21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. She's jumped or she's going to jump? Yeah. What floor? Yeah. Well, where is it? I'll get somebody to pull her inside. You are by transcription oh, yeah? in the muster room at the 21st Precinct. The nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. Just do what you can until the officers get there. Yeah, that's right. They're coming right over. Okay. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. 173,000 people wedged into nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River. The security of their homes, their prisons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st. 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Keogh. Thomas P. Keogh. I'm captain in command of the 21st Precinct. I was doing day duty, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It was a clear, sunny day and pleasantly cool for the time of year. When I came into the station house at 7.35, I went directly into my office and changed to uniform. Then I sat down at my desk to go over reports and communications that had piled up since I was last on duty 24 hours before. Sharply at 8, I got up and walked out into the muster room where I turned out the platoon for the day tour. After the men, who would patrol the precinct for the next eight hours, marched out the front door to take over their posts, I remained behind the desk for a few minutes talking to Lieutenant Snyder, who would be desk officer during the tour. The sergeant on TS duty sat at the switchboard several feet away. Uh, what time do you have to be there, Harry? Well, the subpoena said 10 a.m., Captain. That'll leave here about 9.30. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they had to subpoena me down the grand jury for, in that case, anyway. Well, I suppose they want to definitely establish what property he had on this person when he was searched before the desk. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, who's taking the desk when you leave? All right. You're well, uh, Captain right Sergeant there. Waters will supervise patrol. Sergeant Collins is taking the desk, and we're bringing in Underwood for TS duty. Okay. I should be back before noon. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Who am I supposed to see? Well, what's the trouble, ma'am? Oh, well, I found this tag on the steering wheel of my car. I want to thank you very much. I parked my car last night, and I forgot to take the keys out. I really appreciate the police doing something about it. Leaving a tag like this is a very good idea. May I uh, see the tag, please? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm glad it says on there where to come. I've lived in the neighborhood for four years. I always thought the police station on 51st Street was the one for my house. You have the uh, registration for your car? Oh, yeah, I got it right here. I always carry it in my purse. I'd like to see your operator's license, too, please. Oh, I keep them both together on the other side of that plastic thing. Mm, thank you. It's a wonderful service of the police to take the keys out of the car and leave a tag like that so that people won't get worried. Do you mind uh, signing your name on this pad, uh, Miss Hoyer? Why? Well, I, I just want to compare the signatures with those on your license for identification. Oh, of course not. I agree with you that you can't be too careful. Yeah. Well, you can't just give the key to anybody who walks into the police station and ask for them, can you? No, we can't. Now, here are your keys. Oh, thank you. I'm much obliged to you. This is a real fine service on the part of the police. I appreciate it. And uh, this is for you, too, Miss Hoyer. Oh, what's that? Well, that's a summons for you to appear in court next Wednesday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Summons? For what? Well, uh, any person that leaves a motor vehicle standing unattended on the street for more than three minutes with the ignition key in the lock is violating the law. You mean it? You're giving me a ticket? If that's what you want to call it, uh, yes, Miss Hoyer. Well, I like that. Well, it's an offense to leave the keys in your car. Yeah, but I just forgot. You forgot, and someone might have stolen it if the officer hadn't picked them up first. Well, I think it's a lot of nerve to give me a ticket over something like that. After all, it's my car. If I wanted to leave my keys in it, I could do it, but I didn't want to. I just forgot. Well, you won't forget next time, will you? I don't see why I have to go to the trouble and pay a fine and everything like that. I thought taking the keys out of the car and bringing them to the police station was just a service. It is a service, Miss Hoyer. We probably prevented your car from being stolen. Well, I call it anything but a service. You're welcome, Miss Hoyer. <laughs> well, I thought we gained a friend, Skipper. You did, until you handed her the summons. Yeah, from hero to bum in one easy lesson. <laughs> or one hard summons. Uh, who's the 124 man on the job this tour? Fallon, Captain. Did you tell him to come to my office? Yes. Is the emergency squad on the way? I've got to send a 49 down to the license division. What yeah. about an ambulance? Okay, Skipper, I'll send him right in. All right. Captain. Yes, Sergeant? We got a leaper. Where is this? 
She hasn't jumped yet, Captain. She's sitting on the ledge of her apartment building outside the window, 781 East 66th Street. Is the emergency squad on the way? Yes, sir. CB got the call to rank. All right. Have a car come by for me. Okay, Captain. Right away. Suicide or attempted suicide is a serious problem. But its seriousness is multiplied several times because an individual in such a frame of mind generally has no regard for other lives. In the city of New York, it is not unusual for an innocent pedestrian to be killed or injured when a suicide leaps from a high building. Still more common are explosions resulting from gas suicide. To the police, the problem is as much protection of the general public as rescue of the person intent upon destroying himself. For this and other rescue work, the police department maintains 10 emergency service squads. Assigned to each of these 10 squads are three sergeants and 24 patrolmen, specially trained for the work. Each squad is equipped with two radio emergency patrol cars and a truck, all constructed according to specifications. The cars, which carry light rescue equipment, are in constant patrol of the districts to which they are assigned. The 10 trucks, garaged throughout the city, respond to the scene of an emergency whenever heavier rescue equipment or additional men is needed. When the RMP car, which had picked me up at the station house, arrived in the block, one of the radio emergency patrol cars was already on the job. There were sector cars number two and number five, and the sergeant's car from the 21st. Two men had been assigned to keep the sidewalk in front of 781 clear, but a crowd of people was beginning to gather across the street. Their eyes were fixed on the 11th floor of the apartment building. I instructed patrolman Coley, the operator of my car, to pull in. Get busy over there, Coley. I'll keep those people back. Sergeant, Sergeant Waters. Now go on, get across the street. This is no place for you. Get over there. Hello, Captain. How long has she been sitting there, Sergeant? It's 10 after 8, Captain. Mm -hmm. What floor is that? 11. What about life nets? I just came downstairs to check and see what's holding up the emergency truck, Captain. We'll get the nets up as soon as they get here. Uh, you want to come up? Yeah. My name is Mrs. Elizabeth Shea. Neighbors tell me she's about 50 years old. Mm -hmm. All right, get on the job over there. Don't let the people walk down this way, will you? Yes. Go on. Yes, no, uh, go ahead, Captain. She's a widow, lives here alone. The elevator's back there. How close can you get to her? We're in the next apartment, Captain. We can get close enough to talk to her, that's about all. Uh, looking out the window, that is. Mm -hmm. What about her front door? It's locked from the inside. Uh. Going up? Yeah, we're going up. There's some excitement around here this morning, huh? Glad every day isn't like this. Eleven. This name is Bugs. I could have told you she was Bugs. Plain nut. She's a recluse-like, you know. You mean she never comes out of the apartment? Oh, she comes out all right. She just don't talk to nobody when she does. Takes like a crowbar to get a good morning out of her. Mm -hmm. Who's on the job up there? Well, Meister was the first man here. He started to talk to her. He's still doing it. So Lieutenant King. He was out on patrol and responded. He came up. He's talking to her, too. Do you think they'll be able to talk her back in? Believe me, you're going to have some job. <laughs> Eleven. Yeah, Who are those men? Some of ours, Captain, and some from the emergency service division. Uh -huh. All right, you men. Get it down. Now, just keep it quiet. If you make too much noise out here in the hall, she's liable to hear you and jump. Okay, Captain. Okay, Captain. Uh, this way, Captain. All right. That's her door, Captain. All right, keep those men posted here. Yes, sir. As soon as the emergency truck comes, we'll have men with bars and axes here to break it down if we have to. Okay. Uh, next door there is Mrs. Lanigan. Uh, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. We're talking to her through Mrs. Lanigan's front window. In here, sir. That's Mrs. Lanigan there. Uh, Mrs. Lanigan. Yes. Mrs. Lanigan, this is uh, Captain Keogh, commanding officer of the 21st Precinct. Oh, how do you do, Captain? This is awful, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm sorry to have my men going through your apartment. Oh, that, that's all right. I'm glad to do what I can. That poor little thing, I never knew she was so troubled. I never had any idea. Mm -hmm. Do you know her very well? Oh, no, hardly more than to nod to her. We've been living here four years, and she's here longer than that. She's never been in my apartment. I've never been in hers. I see. You think you're going to be able to do something? I mean, it'd be awful if she jumped. Well, we're going to try. Want to take a look, Captain? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, Mrs. Lanning. Uh, yes, of course. Now, aren't you getting hungry out there, Mrs. Chair? And cold? Hello, Matt. Come here, Captain, nice coffee. what about the emergency nice truck, Sergeant? It's on away, Lieutenant time. King. Are you doing any good? Well, well I tried. Now, Meister's trying again. It's kind of hard to get her to answer us. You really ought to have some... How far away is she? 
Well, it's about eight feet, Captain. I started to climb out on the ledge of this window once. She said if I came out any farther, she'd jump. She told me not to come any farther. Uh-huh. You think we can string life nets below? Don't you think so? I've got a... I've got men down on the ninth floor, Skipper. Mm-hmm. They're there with the manager of the building. They're going in every apartment and opening the windows. They're getting ready for the emergency truck. Then you'll be able to get the nets up right away, huh? What do you say, Mr. Yes, sir. Jay. As soon as the truck comes. All right, let's see how he's doing. Now, there's something bothering you. If there's something on your mind, just come on inside. We'll talk it over. I tried that before. We'll get it straightened out. Now, you've got the whole police department on your side, Mr. Chair, all of us. If you've got any real problems, we can even get the commissioner up here. You see, the captain came. The captain came to help you. He's here now. Would you like to talk to the captain? Maybe he can help you. All right, you're just a second. Captain Keel, I think he'll talk to you. All right. All right, here's the captain, Mr. Chair. And this is the boss, Captain Keel. Now, he can solve all your problems for you. <coughs> Go ahead, Captain. I got your legs. <laughs> yeah. Watch it, Captain. Hold on. I'm all right. Mr. Shayer, this is the captain, the boss of this whole precinct. How do you do, Mrs. Shayer? I'm sorry to cause you all this trouble, Captain. That's all I wanted to tell you. Now, why don't you come inside? We'll talk about it. No. I'm going to jump. I don't care to live anymore. There's nothing left. So I just don't care to live anymore. Well, now, I don't think there's any problem that can't be straightened out. Not mine. I just don't know what to do about mine. What's that? More policemen? Yes, I think so. So much trouble. I'm just a problem. I'll have to jump. If I jump, I won't be any more of a problem. Now, that's not so, Mrs. Shea. It might be a worse problem for many people. I'm going to jump. Goodbye. Goodbye, Captain. Mrs. Shea. Yes? Mrs. Shea, it would be a great favor to me if you didn't. But I should. It would be a great favor to me. I can't promise you anything. All right, Mrs. Shea. You go ahead and think about it. Mrs. Shea, apparently demented, remained on the ledge outside her apartment on the 11th floor of the East 66th Street building. Her door was locked from the inside, and we feared an attempt to break it down would cause her to jump. Officers could get only within about eight feet of her by leaning out the window of the apartment next door. For nearly an hour, Lieutenant King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, Solomon Meister and I talked to her in shifts, attempting to coax her back into her apartment. All our pleas were fruitless. In the meantime, specially constructed rope life nets, 20 by 25 feet, were strung from windows on the ninth floor of the building, directly below the point where Mrs. Shea was perched. If she jumped, she would hit the net. But the sergeant in charge of the emergency service squad on the job informed me there was considerable chance that the nets would not hold because of lack of adequate support from above. 38 police officers from the 21st Detective Squad, the 21st Precinct, 19th Precinct, Traffic Precinct C, and the Emergency Service Division were assigned to various tasks, both on the street and in the building. For instance, four ESD patrolmen stood at the door to Mr. Shea's apartment with axes and crowbars, ready to break the door down. An ambulance from Metropolitan Hospital was standing by. In the apartment next door, Lieutenant King and I were close to the window. Our patrolman, Meister, leaned way out to talk to the woman. She might sit there all day, Captain. Well, that'd be better than jumping, Matt. Yes, sir. Do you smoke, Mrs. Chair? The last leaper we had was that one on Fifth Avenue. Remember that one, Captain? Yeah, I read about that one. Now, what kind do you smoke? Captain Keogh. Yes, Sergeant. Come on over here, Harry. The elevator man, Captain. All right. Yes, what is it? She got a telegram this morning. Mrs. Shea. Wouldn't you like to go back? Well, why didn't you tell us this before? I just remembered. How'd you know it was for her? Uh, What's the union boy asked me where she was? Mrs. Elizabeth Shea. You took him up then? Yeah, sure, I took him up. It'd be kind of hard to lie. I'll get one of my men on the job. Let him check Western Union. That's a good idea, Matt. You can try. Sergeant, grab hold of Meister's legs here, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, You better get back on the elevator, Harry. Okay, yeah, I'm going. I'll get someone right on it, Captain. Whitey, stay there. I want to talk to you. This is getting to be a rough one, Captain. Yeah. Who? Oh, he wants to talk to somebody else, I think. Yeah, he's right here, Mrs. Shea. You want him to come out? 
All right, now you stay there. I'll get him to come out. Now you stay there. Just don't move. That's right. He wants to talk to you again, Captain. Okay. He's coming out, Mr. Scherer. I got you, Captain. Go ahead. You want to talk to me, Mrs. Shea? Uh, I... I got tired of talking to him. Well, now, why don't you go back inside and you can talk to all of us? I really don't want to go back inside. I really want to jump. That's all I want to do is jump and I'm scared. I want to die, but I'm scared. Well, now, that's a good sign that you're scared. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Nobody wants me. Nobody needs me. This wouldn't make any difference to anyone, no one at all. It would make a difference to you, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't even make any difference to me. I'm going to jump. I mean, I'm going to jump right now, right now. Now, now, wait a minute, Mrs. Shea. I'm wasting your time, wasting everybody's time. Just making a fool out of myself. That's all just a plain fool right now. Goodbye, Captain. Thank you. Who was the telegram from, Mrs. Shea? What telegram? The one you got this morning. You know everything. Don't you? You know, I got the telegram, you know, enough to put those ropes down there. The person wants to go away with themselves. He's just let them go ahead and do it. I don't see what business it is to the police anyway. They're only trying to help you. You're not trying to help me. You're trying to keep me from doing what I want to do. It's not help. I do know I got a telegram. The detectives found it out. How'd they find it out? Well, it's their job to find out things. Oh. That's right, I forgot. Who was it from? No, I'm not going to tell you that. I don't have to tell you that. It's none of your business. All right, all right. If that's the way you feel about it. It's from my son, Ernest. Oh. I don't know why you're making such a fuss about it, because I'll be dead. The whole thing will be all over. What are all those people doing down there? Can't they leave someone alone? They have any respect for someone's privacy. It's a shame the way they make a spectacle out of themselves, isn't it? Yes, it is. Standing on the street like they're just making a spectacle of themselves. My son he isn't coming here. Isn't he? No, it's what he said in the telegram. Oh, I see. He lives in California, you know. Uh-huh. I haven't seen him in four years. He wanted me to come out to California. I would have gone to except that I'm afraid to fly. I don't like the trains either. I just can't ride on a train. I get sick riding on trains. Sicker than I'd be in an airplane, I guess, only I've never been in one. Is anything like this looking down now? This isn't so bad. Looking down is really very nice. Well, an airplane is a little bit more comfortable, I think, Mrs. Shea. All right. Couldn't fly. I just couldn't fly. You okay, Captain? Yeah, I'm okay. Hey, look. There's a smoke coming out of the chimneys over there. They ought to do something about that because it ruins my curtains. You know how much soot there is in my curtains all the time. I'd like to see those curtains, Mrs. Shea. My wife complains a lot about soot on her, too. It's just terrible. Now, look, why don't you open the door and let me look at them? Uh... No. No, I couldn't do that. I'm going I'm to jump. Uh, four years since you've seen your son, is that right? Yes. Yeah. How did you know? Tell me the detectives found that out, too. He, he was in Washington. He was coming to New York to see me, especially to see me. But he said he couldn't. He's got to fly back to California to Earth. The telegram said if he could come, he'd telephone from the airport. He won't come. He's not going. Do policemen make a lot of money? Not very much, no. How much? Uh, why don't you go back inside, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Chair? We can sit down and have a nice, long talk about this and the soot on your curtains, everything else. No, no, tell me how much you make. I'd like to know. The captain makes $7,130. A year? Yes. That all. It's not very much, is it? It's all right. How much does he make? Who's that, Mrs. Shea? The policeman, the one who was just talking to me. Uh, Patrolman Meister? I don't know what his name is, I guess. So how much does he make? Well... No, no, don't you tell me. I'd, I'd like him to tell me himself. Well, I can tell no, you... No, you might lie to me. I want him to tell me. I'd like him to tell me. All right. 
Come on, kid. Oh. <laughs> Martha. Come yes, on, talk. She wants to talk to you. All right, Mr. Chair, I'm here. Uh, uh, what is it you want, Mr. King? I got you, Martha. Have any luck with the captain? What was it? Oh, no, she talks about everything but going in. We're working on that telegram, Captain. Uh, it was from her son. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. She told you that? Yeah. He was supposed to come visit her and can't make it. Oh. Can you handle him there, Sergeant? Uh, yes, sir. I got a good hold on. You think that's the reason she went out on the ledge, Captain? Well, it could be, Matt. She said she hasn't seen him in four years. He was supposed to come visit her today. And the telegram said he couldn't. Yeah, but he tried to let her down lightly. He said if he could make it, he'd call from the airport. Uh-huh. No, Matt, I think I've got an idea. What, Captain? Uh, whose apartment is this? Mrs. Lanigan. Oh, yes. Mrs. Lanigan? Yes. Is there any news, Captain? Uh, maybe. Oh, good. Can I uh, see your telephone book? Oh, yes, it's right here. I, I keep it in the cabinet there. Right here. Thank you. Uh, you don't happen to have Mrs. Shea's telephone number, do you? No, I don't. Good idea, Captain. Oh, maybe. Uh, next page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here it is. Butterfield 81598. What do you need a phone number for? Uh, can we use your phone in a minute? Oh, yes, sure, if you want to. Okay, Matt, come on. Let's go talk to those emergency service men in the hall. All right. Might work. Well, something is up to him. You, uh, you men. Yes, sir. What was it? Now, listen, we're going to try something. We think the reason she's doing this is connected with a telegram that was delivered to her this morning. It was from her son, who was supposed to visit her in New York. He said he wasn't going to, but if his plans were changed, he'd call her from the airport. Now, do you think it would take more than ten seconds to get that door open after you hit it? No, Not sir. No, no. All right. I'm going back into the Lanigan apartment. I'm going to ring the phone in Mrs. Shea's. If she goes back into her apartment to answer it, you'll get a signal from Lieutenant King, who will be standing there in the door. As soon as you get that signal, you hit this door and get inside fast. Is that clear? Right, right. Get in right. there fast and grab her. Okay, now. It might work, Captain. Well, I don't know of anything else that will. Now, you stand right here at the door, Matt, okay? Yeah, sure, Captain. Master will pass the word to Sergeant Waters. He'll pass it to me, and I'll give it to you, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, get set with those bars Is down there. Is something going to happen? I just want to use your phone, Mrs. Lanigan. Uh, now, you better stand over there. Oh. Uh, get out of the way and keep quiet, all right? I'd appreciate it. Oh, yes. Anything you say. Good. Sergeant Waters? Uh, yes, sir, Captain. I know it's not much, Mrs. Shea. Tell Meister we're going to try something. It, in, it might bring her back into the room. When she's completely inside, you tell Meister to give you a signal, all right? The TBA is working on it. I hope so. Tell yes, Meister. Sir. I'll tell him. Meister, listen to me. All right, now. Everybody quiet. Keep quiet in the room. Not a sound, please. Are they set out in the hall, Matt? Yes, sir. Everybody's set. All right. Now, wait until you get the signal from me, Matt. From me, not Sergeant Waters, okay? Okay, Captain. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Okay? Okay, Captain. Now, everyone quiet and stay quiet. Hold it, Matt. Not yet. He's in, Captain. Okay, Matt. Hit it. All right. Hit the door.
<laughs> you could have come to see me. Now, don't worry about it, Mrs. Shea. I'm sure he'll come to see you now. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Well, who got bitten? Oh? How old? Four. Well, where's the dog now? Is the dog there? Well, where is it? Oh, yeah? Well, what's the name of the girl that got bit? Now, how do you spell that? All right, you just wait right there in the emergency room. Yeah, right there. I'll have an officer come over there and talk to you. Yeah, right away. Just stay there. And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, transcribed. A factual account of the way police work in the world's greatest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Les Damon in the role of Captain Theo, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King, Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were Frank Perrin, Lawson Zerby, Brian Raven, Elaine Ross, and Frank Campanella. 21st Precinct is written, produced, and directed by Stanley Ness. George Bryan speaking.